Welcome, our lovers. Welcome back to another drawing lecture video. This time, we are going to draw a highly reflected object on tone paper. Some people ask me, can I use a pencil or a willow or vine charcoal stick to begin with the drawing? Well, my answer is, it's up to you. Um, with the pencil, I would suggest to use 2B or HB pencil and draw it with really light pressure at the beginning. Uh, enough for you to see, but not press down too hard on the paper. Uh, that way, the paper can uh, maintain the uh, good surface and you can actually erase to the part that you don't like or don't need to have. You can also draw with the willow or the wine charcoal. They are actually pretty easy to uh, erase. So it's up to you, uh, whichever that you prefer. In this case, I'm just going to use a piece of willow to start with my drawing. I'm finding my levels and symmetry of the object. So this way will give me a better understanding how the object will appear on the uh, on the paper. So this is a basic block out. As I said before, many times people see me that just keep going without too much of a uh, block in. Well, I do block in, but at the same time, I'm just doing in my head. As I mentioned many times, uh, I do block in, all right? So um, just because uh, so many times you have gone through the same process, your mind ultimately will give you a suggestions how to see the object quickly without showing your effort onto the surface or on the process but it doesn't mean that uh, I have not yet gone through everything that you guys have gone through uh, I'm just going much faster in the uh, in my head calculate everything before appears on the subject so I'm showing you now is the way that how that uh, I would measure and uh, compose my drawing. And if you have watched the other drawing that I have made, the video drawing lectures I have made, you can actually connect with what I'm doing now. If you haven't, do go and check out uh, my previous lectures so you will get an idea uh, why I'm doing things in a certain way. So it will be more beneficial for you and to understand easier in the future when you uh, try to conduct your own drawing. It will make sense a lot more and you can absorb the information a lot faster. So I would recommend you to watch the other basic drawing video, it will really, really benefit in you. If you are a serious learner how to draw, if you really want to learn how to draw. So, okay, this is my initial drawing. And quickly, I can just go ahead and start with my rendering. So for a highly reflected object, there are something that you have to remind yourself. Uh, in this case, we do not use the five value system as uh, what I have discussed uh, before. I have 
sharing with people on YouTube before, but they only have three values basically. I will concentrate on three values, which is、uh, light, mid-tone, and dark. So that's all I would focus on. And now, the reason why I'm choosing the、uh, the tone paper to do this drawing, which is al allow me to do faster actually, because the tone paper is reacting as a mid-tone. So I skip. One of the、um, main ingredient, I would not say skip, but、uh, it provide more、um, more information that they help me to do this faster. That's what it is. Because、uh, if if it's on a piece of white paper, that means I have to build up a lot of mid tone and、uh, even the background. And etc. So, but in this case, I will worry less on the mid tone, but concentrate on the lighter tone and the highlight area. So, the process can be faster for a、uh, a quick lecture and demo like this. So, it will be more beneficial for you. How the subjects emerge in front of your eyes. Okay, so this is the initial、uh, basic sketch of the subject. So the next thing I need to do, which is start putting in tones and values,、um, beginning with the、uh, rendering process. So okay,、um, as you can see, is not too. Difficult on this subject right here, right? It's a basic shape、um, with、uh, a little bit more、uh, fancy design at the tip of the mouth area. So block in. Okay, I'm gonna block in with the shape of the、uh, um, the dark tone and the indicating the separating with the light and the dark really quickly. The idea is not to focus on too much on the detail. I always think that the details is like the ice on the cake. You do have the cake made, baked before you put the frosting and everything on top, right? So that is something that you have to get、uh, finished before you move forward. Uh, I'm gonna clean up some of the area that I don't need it. Some of the big shapes only. I'm not gonna do too much of the smaller shapes. The next thing I'm gonna do is to fill in dark tone area. The unifying the dark tone area. After that, basically, I'm mapping the、uh, value, the darker tone value. So the next step for me to do is flatten the shapes. So yes, flatten it.、Um, flatten before become more dimensional. That's something that I would suggest. If you want to do. Everything start rendering look more like three dimensional. Is is really up to you.、Uh, in this case, I'm just try to make things more flat. So that's my goal. Just build up the basic first before the next thing come forward. I'm trying to not to have too much textures and、uh, too much of a、uh, value changes. 
in the entire drawing at this stage. A little bit is fine, but too much, uh, that's not something that I'm aiming for in this moment. So as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty flat. So, so an area is just uh, basic shapes. And also in the, in the shadow area, a lot of times people may reserve too, uh, too much information. At this point, I also try to um, minimize the information I try to blend in first, and then I'll pick it out later. After flatten the surface, now I'm going to adjust some of the uh, tones, finding what is uh, the darkest and where it should be a little bit lighter. So this would be my next step. And I also try to preserve the uh, lightest value area to not touch by the charcoal. If there's a little bit of indication, then I will erase, make sure the area is clean. And somebody mentioned that um, when they use the tone paper like this and the white chalk touching the charcoal, it become kind of a bluish tones on top of the page. So that's something that I want to preserve at the beginning. Telling myself that area is not going to be touch any chalk mixing with uh, charcoal. So. You have to constantly telling yourself, reminding yourself. Otherwise, it would be easily just put the charcoal on top of the area, and then later on, when you try to um, render it, it will become a little more kind of a uh, I was what what what's the uh, terms I'm I was looking for? Uh, probably would be. Uh, some people are using the term muddy or dirty or things like that. So, but as once again, uh, I have done demos with two different techniques. Some people like the whole drawing connected with charcoal and white chalk. It's really up to you. As I said before, it, my personal choice would be letting the paper to do more work for me instead of I worked so hard try to do everything by myself instead of uh, allowing the paper to participate and also anticipate so I'm just clean up a little here and there And let the paper to be able to remain as clean as possible for some of the area. So I can actually go ahead later on and do some um, rendering on top with the white truck. The idea is preparation. Preparing the what will be happening ahead of uh, the drawing. All these are the preparation, what I'm doing now. Just like when you cook a fine meal, right? You have to really know your ingredient and then knowing the way how to prepare it. You spend a lot of time to prepare it. And when, when time comes to really cooking, then you know what's going on and what to deal with and how to add the ingredient and also with the seasoning things like that so this is the stage for preparation it looks a little bit slow but that's okay 
uh, we need the time to develop. So as I said before, when you do um, highly reflected object, you only concentrate about three tones. Darkest, lightest, and limit tone. That's all. There's no core shadow, uh, reflected light, uh, things like that. Okay, so that gives you an idea how to aim for. I'm adding some of the even darker tone to emphasize the, uh, the strong value contrast later on appearing on the subject. So I'm finding what is the darkest part and emphasizing the idea of the tone. After all the settings we have made, including some of the darkest tone on the subject and some of the lighter tones at the mid-tone area, we are about to begin with the fun part, which is uh, erasing out some of the lighter tone on the dark area and also using the white chalk on the light area. Some people might uh, want to do really quickly um, before building up enough information. Just directly want, go, want to go do all the details, all the fancy parts. For your artwork to become strong and solid, well, you cannot skip any of these stages. Um, if you're going to skip it, that means something is going to miss. Uh, you're going to miss some part of it, and then later on when you try to come back, actually the artwork will not be as strong as you wanted it. So that's why I spent so much time just to do the basic first, indicate enough to support all the light part. As you can see, the subject has good amount of um, dark tone and, uh, and mid tone. As I said, now is the fun part to do picking out some of the lighter tone on the subject. Let's begin. At this part, I'm going to have some fun with my eraser. Once the lighter part put into the subject, everything will change really quickly. And the lighter tone area will become more richer and help the subject come forward much, much more. And, and also more interesting too. So as I said, this is a fun part. As you can, uh, you can see, the shape is coming along. Building up more and more kind of uh, shapes and information that you can see. Once again, this is a short term, really short, um, really short drawing. If a long term drawing, the object I will build up even with more layers of um, build-ups with values and subtle info, etc. But at this point, a short demo, this is what I will show you. Reserve is the key. How you want the uh, object to come forward. So it's really, really about planning, as I have mentioned it in the other video. You have to plan ahead. Don't just keep drawing as you go. But of course, at the beginning that your experience is not enough, you have to go through this stage 
explore and also try to figure out what's going on while you draw. But you should have a, a general idea that uh, at the same time you join, if you cannot plan out at the beginning what you want, how you want it, what is more important, so you have make more decisions. I'm still doing a little bit more build up on the lighter tone area. As you can see now, the subject become more and more glowing, which is something that I want to make because this is a highly reflected object, right? So. I'm using my eraser as a drawing tool. Back and forth. Erase, draw in and erase and draw back in again until I get the result. As you can see, my movement is never fast. It's quite slow, actually. It is about planning. It's all about planning. I'm still learning how to plan. So what to do and how to go for and what would be the result, things like that. I still need to plan out ahead for every move I make on top of the drawing. Once again, this is a short term drawing within an hour. So I will not draw too defined and too detailed, but this will be enough for you to see. For a short term drawing, this is how much I would uh, show you. And also when you're doing this, picking the highlight, be selective. Don't just pick up anything that you see on a subject. Uh, you have to be selective, as I said. What to include to make the subject look beautiful and also to be more attractive. Not just keep drawing, also have to calculate. Now the object become more and more alive, as you can see, because some of the highlight I choose to add on. Once again, planning. Planning will help you to go through your subject and define your subject. Now after the uh, eraser, the next thing I need to go for, which is use the white chalk to increase the highlight, emphasize the highlight. And that part would be even more fun, actually. Um, 
that would be the conclusion for the outcome of the drawing. So before that, I'm still going to go in and see if I can finalize more of the subject and make it even more precise before anything that up here as a final. Okay, so now I'm going to use a white chalk. Oops, let me get rid of that, get that ready. Clean out most of the area before the white chalk come in and finalize everything. Okay, the white chalk is, here we go. As I pointed out before, it's better to sharpen your white chalk to be longer and pointier. Not just white chalk, actually. It, it is all, all the drawing materials, such as the pencil and the white chalk. Some people even sharpen the, uh, the wallow or the wine charcoal. But I pay more attention to the pencils. Make this part really, really bright, shiny. Now, as you can see earlier, this part was quite bright, but now compared to the white chalk I put on top, that all of a sudden been reduced to a mid tone. You can see the differences, right? Just if you want to see how different look like, just rewind the uh, the video about a um, few minutes ago to check out the shape of the object now and compared to now. Going back and forth, you can actually see how much of uh, the white chalk can help the subject come popping forward. Actually. Now, when applying the white chalk, you also have to calculate uh, where I can use the white chalk, where I can just barely touch with the white chalk or not, not touching at all. You also have to calculate. Not everywhere with the same pressure, same amount of the, of the white appears on the subject. See, all suddenly the object become more metallic looking. And even at this stage, still need to come back and clean up some of the area. Do the final touch on top.
Now at this stage, I'm just finalizing the highlight area to complete the drawing. As I said, this is a short-term drawing, so it's not going to be as fancy, but enough for you to see how the subject can come uh, come about and become the shiny objects that uh, we need to see. I believe at this point the object really looks like metallic. Really, really shiny. Last bit of uh, the indication. Let me finalize here a little more. So, this is it, a basic drawing, a fundamental drawing of a highly reflected object, a metallic object. I hope you enjoyed this video and there will be more coming up and uh, if you like it, please click like, subscribe and share it with your friends. See you next time. Bye.